Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing another movie review. This movie is an action film from Japan, English language, released in the year 2007, directed by Takashi Miike, and this film is called Sukiyaki Western Django. So Sukiyaki Western Django is set in the wild, wild east. You have a very poor mountain community that live life very peacefully, but their peaceful existence is about to be shattered one day when a rumour gets out to some warring clans that a, a stash of gold is in this village that is going to set them up for life. So these warring clans, known as the Genji clan and the Heke clan, one all in white and one all in red, they go to this village to make it their own until they can find the loot, but they don't want to share the loot and the village is not big enough for the both of them, so a war breaks out. Now the real victims of this war are the villagers that lived in this peaceful environment that get caught in the crossfire. So their once peaceful life has turned into a living nightmare, but there is hope for the future upon the arrival of a mysterious gunslinger. Now this gunslinger is very dangerous, both of these clans try to recruit him, but what started off as a quest for gold turns into a fight for the villagers when he realises the hardships that they've been put through. So whether or not he chooses the riches or in fact the honour of saving people is something you're going to have to find out for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on Sukiyaki Western Django. Not only is this one of the most underrated Takashi Miike films, I believe it's one of the best Takashi Miike films and it's a clear example of how good this guy's imagination is and how vividly he can portray what's in his mind on screen. And so the only reason I can come up with as to why this movie is not widely talked about is that I believe it's a victim of his prolific nature. Now Takashi Miike is one of the most prolific filmmakers and he churns out so much stuff that every now and then a really good movie is going to get lost but in the forgettable experiences and so that's the only credible reason I can come up with as to why not many people talk about this movie because once you actually see this film it is just a, a fine example of what a creative filmmaker Takashi Miike is. This is a film that does take on very traditional western uh, genre tropes as far as a gunslinger coming in to liberate good people from an evil presence. It takes on spaghetti western tropes with the soundtrack and the use of the camera as far as the facial expressions are concerned and also the samurai culture of the East. So it's taking in all these cultures and what it moulds is a really crazy world, but it's a crazy world that I actually could gravitate to because there are realistic characteristics within this story. These characters and the plight that they're going through, I've felt a lot of sympathy for. There are very tragic moments in this film that give it a very serious purpose. Is that yes, it's far out and crazy and it splashes in like a very vivid and surreal dream, but it also has that seriousness that I actually could feel the fear for these people. And so while all this carnage is going on, I had that level of on the edge of my seat because I didn't want to see the good people die. And that's something that Kashi Miike does, is that he does have a very strong structure and reason to his craziness. And Sukiyaki Western Django, it was actually a riveting experience because of that very fact. I thought as though the gunslinger was a very likeable individual. He was actually fighting against the evil. And the, what happens to these villages, and particularly the villages that Kashi Miike focuses on, I thought was very hard. And it was very hard to watch and it was actually quite sad. And so you want this gunslinger to succeed. So not only are you marvelous at the very caricature and over-the-top violence, the very funny script and very, very funny villains, but you're also hoping that these villagers can get out alive. And so there's a lot of conflicting emotions that makes it a lot of fun. This is a, a cartoon or a manga come to life and it's just been splashed in very gratuitous violence. It's not making any apologies for the very offensive moments that happen in this movie. And so it is definitely a trademark of how good Takashi Miike is and as I said no one ever talks about it and so I've seen this movie for six or seven times and I never get sick of it because it just has a very breakneck fast paced action sense to it. I thought the quirkiness was intensified through the English language. This is a film that is not dubbed but it has a, an eastern sort of uh, western feel to it because it's Japanese people speaking in the English language, which can be hard to understand, but once you get used to it, it had that quirkiness that Spaghetti Westerns did when they dubbed their movies, whereas this movie is foreign people speaking in English language, which gives it that same sort of charm. So this is everything that I believe a fan of the Western genre would do, coming from a different culture and wanting to have a spin uh, of the Western spin of his own culture and so he makes it his own subgenre which is something that I absolutely cherished. I thought this was a movie that doesn't come along very often it's a showcase of how good Takashi Miike is but as I said I think it's, a, it's definitely a victim of getting lost within all of that prolific nature that Takashi Miike is. If I have an issue with this movie is that as I said the English language can be a little bit hard to understand from time to time but that's the only criticism I have of what was just an incredibly entertaining film that had a very very surprising element of humanity put into it but you know the villains 
larger than life, a lot of fun. You know, the, the coloring is so vivid, it just feels like a dream come to life and you just marvel at the absolute insanity that is Takashi Miike. It's everything that is a trademark of Takashi Miike. If you are a fan of films such as Ichi the Killer especially, I definitely think you're going to uh, like Sukiyaki Western Django. It is definitely one of his best films and it's his most underrated film because not enough people talk about it. So go out there and see it right now if you are a fan of this brilliant director. I'm going to give Sukiyaki Western Django four stars. Alright guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time you watch your movies, I'll see you later. Bye.